All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So today we're finally gonna start something a little different. We're gonna start plumbing. So the reason we're gonna start plumbing before I'm actually done with my electrical is because of this stuff. It rained all day long yesterday. It's 90% chance of rain today. Radar is already blowing up. So I had to cancel my ditch witch rental to finish the electrical, which I have to come all the way from that power pole underground over to here. And I was gonna pull some plumbing and wiring from my pump as well and put some uh, you know, spigots around the house. But we're canceling that. Way too much rain on the horizon. So we'll start plumbing in just a second. I really feel like I need to take the time to explain my plumbing situation because I have been getting tons of questions over the last few days on why on earth am I running CPVC throughout our house? I need to explain where we live, how things are done, because I think a lot of people have missed what's going on in the background. Most of my plumbing is already done. Y'all just haven't seen it. So it is extremely common here in the South to run plumbing under your slab. That's already all been done. I explained that in one episode. I'll try to remember to link that original episode where we did the rough end plumbing before the slab. At the end of this video, you should watch it. Long story short, whenever I hired a plumber in to do under slab waste plumbing. I decided that's something I needed perfect and one laid it out right, so I hired somebody to do it. I was under the impression I was getting septic only and I was gonna run PEX through the roof in the house and do a nice, nice cutoff valve system in the closet. To my shock, when I came out here and checked on the plumber one day, he had already done run hot and cold plumbing as well as all my waste and septic for the same price. So apparently that's what he was quoting me all along. I was under the impression I was getting septic only. So I felt like I won the lottery. I was like, daggum, I got free hot and cold water plumbing. And again, that's an extremely common way to do it. We're in Florida, no ground freezing, no in-wall freezing of pipes, no slab freezing, none of that stuff here. This is the way most people do new homes down here. So just for example, over here, look, plumbing is already coming up through the slab. It runs underneath. Again, y'all should go back and watch that video and it feeds throughout different sections of the house. So everybody keeps telling me, you you can't run CB, CPVC in a house. You're gonna have all these fittings that's gonna leak. I think people are under the impression that I'm about to just start running it through the walls and up everywhere. Whereas what you're seeing is, is it. It's basically done. For example, I'm gonna cut this off put two elbows on there, poke through the wall with my drain, these two, that's it. That's the only fittings in the house that you're gonna see. And I'm not worried about a waste drain because it's not pressurized. So two elbows right here, there is very minimal chance of future leak there. It goes outside, then you'd hook up for our outdoor kitchen out there. Moving along over here into the kitchen. There it is. It's been hard to notice in the background, I'm sure, but I'm gonna do the same thing. Couple of elbows, poke just through underneath the kitchen cabinet, hookups, that's it. There's there's nothing else to leak. Very simple system. There is my plumbing coming up for the water valve for the refrigerator. We got something very similar back here in the bathroom to feed the toilets. Just one little line coming through. Again, everything's through slab, already done. There's hookups over there for a vanity as well as a utility sink on the opposite side of the wall. Here's my hookups for washer and dryer. Well, washer, not dryer. And then one more in here. This is actually a special one. This comes into Tiffany's uh, vanity area. This is kind of her little get ready room, but we've always talked about we're potentially gonna add on the back side of the house back here, and I can feed right back out the wall here and tie into, say if we did another bathroom back there and we have waste septic right outside. I'll show you all that now. So I might as well take this time to show you all this little bit of plumbing because again, so many people have missed it. I think everybody's thinking I'm starting from scratch right now, whereas the majority of my plumbing's, it's really done. We just gotta do vent stacks and a little bit of inside stuff. It's gonna be relatively straightforward. So we tried to go ahead and think. We have right here, outside waste drain that's sloped the appropriate angle going back into the house and then septic slopes all through the house and actually comes out over here, we continue to slope down the property and we're gonna have our septic system and drain fill out there. We're gonna do that just a little bit later. So we're gonna poke that out. I'm gonna put a clean out here for now, but if we ever do build a slab and add on a room back here or multiple rooms, bam, we've already got septic. We tried to think ahead on that. We've got hot and cold water that we can tap through the wall right here. 
bring into this new addition. And don't forget, I've got a nice open attic up there. I can bring wire over, run another sub panel. Very easy add on back here. And to wrap the plumbing up is right here. So this is a line that the uh, plumber stubbed out of the house and check this out. Hey, you can't even hardly see the pressure gauge is so fogged up, but we're still at like 80 some odd PSI. He originally pressurized this up to check the system months and months and months ago to 90 PSI. It's still holding pressure. There is no leaks. We're good to go. So I've got to tie this line in to a short run of PVC that I'm going to bring over from the pump and well over there. And then this is what will actually feed the house. We are going to mount the hot water heater on the outside here. There's a hot and cold water line just inside the wall actually right there so we'll probably mount the hot water heater in between the sub panel and the meter panel right here on the wall and uh that's kind of our plumbing so everybody's telling me you're crazy you're crazy cpvc is is brittle it cracks it breaks it leaks i'm gonna be honest with y'all my last house had cpvc in it for 40 years it was the childhood home i grew up in i bought it i lived there for 12 more years so um 40 years it had on the hot water side, see PVC, never a leak, never once a leak. Again, this is extremely common stuff to run down here in the south. And new PVC is not like the old super brittle stuff. Trust me, it has changed. Y'all should read up on it some. Um, now where I did have leaks in that house was the old copper lines. People used to run copper water lines. Those eventually corrode and get pinhole leaks. So. I actually trust CPVC. Do I want it run all throughout my roof and fittings everywhere? No, my original plan was to do PEX. And actually if we do add-ons, I may still put PEX cutoff valves in the closet because I have water lines over here in the closet because the original plumber thought that the hot water heater was going in here. I've got to poke those out, but I can still do a tie in here. PEX line set up, come up through the roof. I can feed the other side of the house or I can just run a line outside which is maybe what I do. So if for any reason I ever have problems or leaks inside the house, it'd be aggravating to get PEX down to these areas, but I could, I could go through the attic, I could drill down through top plates and I could just turn the house over to PEX with the exception of the front porch would be about impossible. It is what it is. Actually, I already know how I could run water lines up there to that underneath the siding. So we do have options. I'm personally not concerned about it because all the fittings are staying low and there is minimal uh, hookups and fittings in the house. That's enough talking. I really felt like I need to explain that because everybody's hitting me up about that. Down here in the south, no concern. Through slab, very common. I can understand up north, y'all running pec signs everywhere and insulating them, things like that. There's just no freezing issues here whatsoever and none of the stuff's exposed to sunlight and everything else. Let's get started. All right, so I've got my holes cut through to the outside. 
Um, I've also sanded all the edges. I'm a big believer in sandpaper to clean up all of the burrs to make sure we get a good fit. And then wipe everything down nice and clean. Now, I've never used the primer to be perfectly honest with you. I know a lot of people believe in it, but a lot of people don't. Um, when it comes to PVC, the blue rain or shine stuff has always been the number one glue for me. Actually, I've never had PVC glue fail in my life while using these. Um, the only time that I've ever had PVC glue fail was that clear stuff for PVC itself, and I'll never use it again. And it just might have been an old batch. But this blue stuff mess, it looks messy, drips down the pipes, doesn't look good, but I don't care. I don't want leaks. This stuff works. Now, as far as for the CPVC, this stuff is not rated for it. I have another glue that is CPVC rated, so we'll be using two different types of glue here. Now, I always find it best to apply your glue to both surfaces, and you got to work kind of quick with this stuff. So I'll apply it to my 90 here, as well as to that pipe. I like to put it on and give it about a quarter of a turn. And then press and hold, especially when putting two pipes together, because this glue will actually cause this, the fitting to slip back off if you're not careful. A lot of people don't realize that. If you'll hold for a few seconds, you'll get a really good bond with this stuff. And essentially, to people that don't know what this is, all the glue's doing is it's welding the two pieces of pipe together. It's a chemical weld, actually kind of dissolving and hardening up and gluing the two pieces together, but essentially welding the plastics. All right, that worked pretty good. I'll just press and hold. All I'm trying to do is get a short run of PVC out here that after my siding is on, I can connect here, connect my P-trap underneath the sink or 90 off and figure out exactly where I'm gonna put the sink out here. And I've also made sure, this is about 36 inches high up here, so the tops of my cabinets would be somewhere in this range. Make sure that I cut these pops off low enough and got them down that they'll come out inside of my cabinets that I'm gonna mount out here and you'll never see this. All right, that should be good enough there. All right, so I just realized something I should have shown y'all, and man, I hope y'all can hear me with all this rain. I just stuck my microphone on. I probably installed this drain especially too high going out the wall, but I think I can deal with it. And here's the reason why. So say my countertop's about this high outside, it'll be somewhere in that range. My plan is to put one of those shallow mount stainless steel bowl sinks there just for cleaning up, washing hands, and preparing food. Not really gonna do dishes or anything out there. So I have to make sure that I have enough room for the bottom of that shallow pan, then a P-trap to connect to this and not really be much lower than the drain. So a lower drain is not necessarily a bad thing, so even better thing. The other thing you're probably looking at here is wondering why is this not vented? Um, well, there is a good reason why. We have a steel truss and everything else up here. There is no way that I see how to run a vent pipe and vent this right here. And you're supposed to vent your drains. So what I'm gonna do is install underneath the sink with the P-trap, there is a, an air valve. Uh, that they make for situations like this. It's got a, a spring-loaded plunger in it, so as water drops down, it pulls the plunger down, pulls air in so water f flows freely, and then the plunger goes back up so you don't pull all the water out of your P-trap and you don't get bad smells back up in here. That'll be in the cabinet outside. So being that this is outside, I don't really mind using that, and that saves me from having to figure out how to get a two-inch drain or vent pipe up here which is just not gonna happen. All right, so something that's very critical that I have to keep in mind when doing this plumbing right here is where my drain pipes come out of the wall. So cabinets uh, are at a relatively standard height in homes unless you order certain size higher cabinets, custom cabinets. So with that said, you've gotta keep in mind that you've got a cabinet top, how deep is your sink bowl, and then you still have a drain coming off, again, that has to go to that P-trap. So if my drain were to come out of the wall far too high up, well, it could be hitting the sink or not getting good flow because it's well back above the drain in the sink. 
So it looks like industry standard to have your drain come out of the wall, somewhere between 12 to 18 inches. I think 14 is a good sweet spot from everything I'm reading. If you go with a deeper farmhouse sink like we're gonna do, you just don't wanna go too high. So I'm gonna mark that down here on this pipe, cut it off and have my drain come out around 14 inches. Now there's something I've gotta start doing differently now that I'm in the house. This is called a sanitary tee. You can see it has a sweep a certain direction. That's the direction of flow, either air or water. So I have to put one of these in now, actually come through the wall, run a vent stack up into the roof and tie all my other plumbing into that. Then I can come out of the wall for the drain. So keep in mind, this drain right here ties to my plumbing, to my septic system down there. So as you pull the plunger in the sink and let all that water flow down through this T, down into the septic system, it's pushing air out of the pipe that's already in there. Well, if you push air out, you have to replace it. That's where this vent stack that's gonna pull all the way from the roof comes in. So as the water rushes past this, it's pulling air in, allowing it to replace the air that was just displaced. Otherwise, you wind up with two problems. A system that does not flow uh, freely because if you didn't have the vent, and two, water is going to pull the air out of somewhere. So it'll actually turn the sink drain into a vent, pull your P-trap completely clean. That's a loop that's beneath the sink that you know we kind of always see, well, it kind of loops back up like this and back over, I just don't have one with me. And it maintains water in there to uh, create a positive pressure seal so vent gases don't come back up out of your septic system and you smell that in the house. So if you don't have a properly vented system, you pull the water out of that P-trap pull it out of your drain, then you get smells. And again, you don't get a free flowing system. So we've all as kids, maybe as adults, done where you take the straw, you stick it down in water, you lift it up and look, I have water in there. But why is the water not coming out of the straw? It's because I'm not allowing air to enter on the backside. But as soon as I release my finger, the water freely flows right out because it's replacing the air that it just displaced with the water. I know a lot of y'all get this, but there's a lot of people that tell me they watch this, they're learning, have no idea about building a house, but find these things very interesting. So I thought I would mention this and point it out. Venting a system is critical and it's code. I can't pass without it. So I've got to do a lot of work drilling through timbers and running here to make this happen. As with most things in life, you get what you pay for. So I just went and bought me a really expensive Diablo carbide hole saw. And I'm going to start building me a kit with some uh, some bigger hole saws here. But I decided to splurge, get the carbide instead of the bimetal. And then these are like more than twice as much money. But they claim they'll cut through nails, last for a really long time. So let's see here. And it's got this quick change adapter right here which is kind of neat but hopefully it works where you just snap these off you can literally grab a different hole size all the way down to like a tiny one inch snap these right on or clean a plug out i like that design let's we'll see how well this works but as we say in the south the proof's in the pudding let's we'll see how well this cuts got a little bit larger size too so i can fit my pipe there a little better Oh, 
that's dangerous, y'all. That is straight up dangerous. All right, let's see how quick we can get this out. Now, obviously, that cut really quick. Plug come out quick. Let's see if we can keep going. Oh, I'm gonna break my ribs. So the plugs do come out easy. I like that. But man, there's a learning curve with this. And I just cut through a nail. I heard it. That's why I bought carbide. Let's see if the teeth are still okay. So yeah, as y'all can see, I made some changes. <laughs> this is turning into one of those days where you step back and punt. <laughs> I am wrapping this day up. I'm gonna go eat some supper, edit a video, get some sleep, and start all over tomorrow with a clear mind. So I had to make two trips to town today, broke one of my pilot bits, burn out one of my hole saws, had to go get some better glue because I wasn't trusting the first glue I started with. I noticed some stuff was pulling apart that shouldn't. So I redid every connection with really good OD glue. And yep, what I was telling you about a minute ago, I decided to take a quick break in front of the fan, read the plumbing code, and that was not gonna pass code at all. So here's what I discovered. What code asked for, plumbing code says, it wants, before you go horizontal anywhere on a vent pipe, you need to be six inches above basically a drain or a floodable, what they call it? It's basically a, a floodable plumbing fixture. We'll just say that. So imagine countertops right here. If the sink was, uh, well, the countertop's gonna be a little lower, but if the countertop or sink top was right here, got your drain and all down there, if this were to sit up and flood, basically it doesn't want the vent line down there. So if the septic were to flood or back up or have a plug, this doesn't back up into the vent line itself. I don't know why that really matters because I'm gluing all these joints. It's the same as down here, but I guess that's just more joints holding water that could leak. So it says that your vent has to be six inches above a floatable plane. So that wasn't going to work at all, but it did say if you could not achieve that, say you had a super low window seal and a, uh, something right here, that you could jog off you know, in either direction, but it had to be at least at a 45. It could not be straight horizontal like I was down here. So I had to cut that out, tear it out. Um, sadly, my drains wound up a little bit lower by me putting another T in there, cutting some stuff out. I 
Could have did another unit and extended my pipe back up, but that's just one more fitting and potential leak. This is still well above the bottom of the cabinet. Gives me plenty of room to play with um, drain and P-trap. So now, as you can see, my vent's up above the sink. Like code says, we go horizontal, then we go up through the roof. So when we come back on another episode, we'll start tying the bathrooms, uh, shower, washer, all that good stuff, the other half bath into this vent line that we're gonna run toward the back of the building and actually vent out the back of the building. There's some more code to talk about there as well that we'll discuss in the next episode. But I'm exhausted. Not a very productive day. But we did get to discuss a lot. We learned some stuff. We read some code. Uh, we got to learn the proper way to do this. A lot of people would say, hey, this is why you need to call a professional. No, I, I don't give up easy like that. This is why I need to take extra time to read the code learn it right like I've been doing with electrical codes and uh, building codes, everything else. So I'm just gonna dive into the plumbing a little bit more. I thought I had understood it, but no, but now it's quite clear reading what I did on some forms and going through the, uh, the UPC there. So thank y'all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We're gonna get a fresh start tomorrow. I'll get y'all another plumbing episode out and hopefully we'll knock out way more than we did today.